Over two years after the release of the 4080, we finally have the RTX 5080 coming in, same as the Super, $200 lower at $999, while packing the same 16 gigabyte VRAM capacity, but it does increase the core count by around 11%, bumps the clock speeds by 4%, moves to faster 30 gigabits per second GDDR7 for around 34% more memory bandwidth, and updates the architecture with a huge focus on AI performance performance, all at the cost of just 40 watts more power. But are these changes enough to allow the 5080 to finally dethrone the 4090 at a much lower price? Or are you better off skipping this generation? Well, today let's find out by taking a look at a 9 game average at 4K and investigate the numerous new RTX 50 features. And before we get into the review, thank you to NVIDIA for sending an RTX 5080 sample for this video. No talking points were dictated, no results have been altered, and my words are completely my own. If I don't feel like it's worth buying, I'll make sure to let you know. And one last thing, a couple big upgrades to the 50 series you may want to consider before we look at the results are one, they come with DisplayPort 2.1, allowing for finally a full uncompressed 4K 240Hz HDR output for those new fancy OLED monitors. Two, NVIDIA has updated the 12 pin connector, so in theory, there should no longer be any melting cables or other issues. And finally, three, the new Founders Edition cooler is a redesign to allow for higher flow through and has been updated to use liquid metal, allowing for much better cooling and acoustics in a two slot design. Small form factor is back, baby. But with all that out of the way, the system I'll be testing today includes a 9800X 3D, 64 gigabytes of 6000 mega transfer, CL30 DDR5 memory, and an X870 ITX Asus motherboard. And the nine games I'll be testing will be Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, Black Myth Wukong, Cyberpunk 2077, Dying Light. 2, Fortnite, Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy Returnal, and the Talos Principle 2. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look first at Black Myth Wukong 4K cinematic settings and comparing the 5080 to the 4090 and 5090 as these are going to be the three most powerful graphics cards you can allegedly get your hands on in 2025 if you're lucky enough. Well, the RTX 4090 in this title is actually 20% faster on average versus the RTX 5080, and it's actually 13% faster on the 1% lows. So there is a significant gap there, despite the 5080 being the newer card. And the 5090, this is just leagues ahead, 60% faster on average and 69% faster on the 1% lows. Though at this native performance here, even the RTX 5090 struggles and you'll definitely wanna use DLSS and we'll go over all those results at the end of the nine game average. But moving on to the next game, Cyberpunk 2077 4K RT Overdrive. And once again, the RTX 4090 has a significant 20% lead over the 5080 on average and 25% lead on those 1% lows. And again, the 5090 crushes the 5080 with 65% more performance on average and 50% better on the 1% lows. But then moving on to Fortnite DirectX 12, 4K epic with hardware ray tracing, and here the gap does actually start to narrow. The RTX 4090 is only 14% faster than the 5080 on average, and 8% faster on the 1% lows, whereas the 5090 is around 40% faster on average and 42% faster on the 1% lows. Next, Ryzen Zero Dawn Remastered 4K very high settings, and here the 4090 has a shocking 29% lead on average and 10% lead on the 1% lows. And the 5090 has a 50% lead on average and 24% lead on the 1% lows when compared to the 5080. Then finally, the last game I'll go over is Returnal 4K epic settings, and here, once again, a little bit less drastic. The 4090 is 13% faster than the 5080 on average and 22% faster on the 1% lows, whereas the 5090 is still a pretty huge 45% faster on average and 50% faster on the 1% lows. But taking a look at the nine game average, well, it's actually not as drastic as you might think. The RTX 4090 is definitely faster, especially at native, where it's 19% faster on average and 15% faster on those 1% lows. But that's actually not a huge increase over the 5080, and I'm not sure too many people are actually gonna be running at that native resolution. But if you do, the RTX 5090 will be 52% faster on average and 49% faster on the 1% lows. And it's no surprise that the 5090 is way faster than the 5080, as the 5090 is effectively double the 5080 in almost all regards, double the VRAM and roughly double the streaming multiprocessors. Yeah, that's gonna get you a whole lot more performance, even if the scaling isn't great. 
but when we take a look at the DLSS balanced results here on the nine game average, well, it might've seemed really drastic in the games that I showed at native, but with settings you'll probably actually run because let's be honest, not using DLSS, especially with their new transformer model, I think would be a mistake for these high-end cards at 4K. You're still gonna get really excellent image quality and here, the RTX 4090 is actually only 13% faster on average and 16% faster on the 1% lows. So it's really not that much faster than the 5080 if you're using DLSS on balanced, and it'll probably be even less so if you use performance mode, which I think will be very viable, making the 4090 possibly not worth the premium depending on the prices. And then the RTX 5090, is still a pretty shocking 40% faster on average and 39% faster on the 1% lows when compared to the 5080. But when we take a look at the price to performance, here's what definitely puts this into perspective. The RTX 5080 absolutely crushes the 5090 and 4090 in terms of value. And we're just talking about MSRPs and to be fair, the 4090 has not been available at its MSRP for a very long time. But fair's fair, even at MSRP, the 5080 is significantly cheaper, even at native at $18.50 per frame versus $21 per frame on the 4090 and nearly the same on the 5090. And when taking a look at the DLSS results, well, it's even more impressive. The 5080 is giving you $10.52 per frame, whereas the RTX 4090 is around $13.30 and pretty much the same for the 5090 as well. So you're gonna be paying nearly a 30% premium per frame if you wanna be using those cards. And that might not be worth it for a lot of people, especially when you consider the total cost as well. The 4090, really it's gonna be hard to find for less than two grand. And the 5090 is gonna be pretty much impossible to find even at two grand. Also, another thing I want you guys to consider is actually the design of the card itself. We talked about this earlier, but to be honest with you, the two slot design definitely works better on the RTX 5080 than the 5090. Now, don't get me wrong, it's definitely really impressive what Nvidia's done with a card that draws 575 watts, but it does come with its downsides. Take a look here. Not only does the 5080 draw way less power at 303 watts versus 572 in the game I tested, but after 15 minutes, well, it also had a pretty big reduction of around 11 decibels in terms of noise, and that is definitely noticeable. It's a huge difference. And the temperature was also nearly 20 degrees lower. So the 5080 Founders Edition as a card itself, I would actually consider to be better than the 5090 Founders Edition in terms of acoustics, power, and temperature. But now let's talk about the features because there's a lot of new stuff coming out alongside the release of the RTX 50 series that makes NVIDIA cards really attractive to a lot of buyers. And let's start off first with frame generation. Now, to be honest with you guys, you could have called me in the past a certified frame generation hater, and I'll be honest, I still don't love it, but I'm starting to see some of its advantages, and I think in certain games, it can definitely be useful. Take a look here at this chart. I mean, at face value, it's definitely really shocking. You're gonna go, wow, zooey, 7.5 times more performance versus stock. That's incredible, but it comes at a cost, and that cost, is pretty significant. When I tested the 5090, without using frame generation, I got about 31 milliseconds of latency uncapped in Cyberpunk 2077, and with 2x it jumped up to 36, 3x 39, and 4x 40. So that's a 16%, 26%, and 29% increase in latency, depending on which one you choose. I do think there are a number of titles out there where 2x frame generation could be worth it, as while the latency is noticeable, it's not horrific, and it does lead to a much smoother image overall. So it has its pros and cons, but 3x and 4x, I'm just not sure I'll ever use these at all in any game because first of all, I'd need a 480 Hertz or higher monitor as typically you want at least 100 FPS native before you start using frame generation to try and get as low of latency as possible. And if you're at 100 FPS and you triple that, well, on a 240 Hertz monitor, you're now outside your G-Sync range and you're gonna have tearing. So this is a very niche feature, but I do suspect there will be some people out there who really enjoy it. But there's a couple other things that I think are actually really huge for gamers, and that's one, DLSS Transformer, and two, NVIDIA Reflex. Now, I did cover this more in the RTX 5090 review, and I do wanna do a whole video on this, but the new DLSS Transformer model 
is incredible. It massively improves the image quality versus the DLSS you're used to now. It's gonna be sharper, and especially in motion, things are gonna look a whole lot better. I mean, this is getting really close to native performance. I'd say even at the performance DLSS setting at 4K, which is a huge boon to gamers, and this is gonna be really hard for AMD and Intel to counter. And with Reflex 2, well, they're actually warping frames before they're even completed in some competitive titles, it looks like, and filling in the gaps, allowing for what I was seeing at CES, around 10 milliseconds lower latency, and this could be actually a pretty huge advantage in some online games where you need to be as fast as possible when tracking targets. But the great news is, those features are coming to all RTX cards. This is not exclusive to the 5080 and 5090. That's excellent. And speaking of excellent, is the 5080 excellent? Well, it has its good and its bad. The good news is it's pretty much splitting the difference between the 4080 and 4090 in terms of performance, and you are getting close to the 4090 for around $600 less in theory. It's also a $200 decrease from the original 4080, although so was the 4080 Super. So in terms of pricing, I think they're going in the right direction. Although I'd love to see it at 899, that would be my perfect price, but hey. But the bad is it comes at a 40 watt higher power draw. There's no increase in VRAM. You'll likely only see around a 15% increase in performance over the 4080 after two whole years of waiting, which is not that impressive. And again, $9.99, while better than $11.99, is still going to be quite high for a lot of buyers. And overall, I feel like NVIDIA is definitely holding back. If they had competition, it would have the same performance or more as a 4090 in my opinion, or again, at least be $8.99 and not $9.99. I'd love to see them jump that SM count from 84 to 112, go from 256 bit to 288 and go from 16 to 18 gigabytes. This would give us 33% more cores, 5% more memory bandwidth and 13% more VRAM, bringing us pretty much to an RTX 4090 in terms of performance, probably just a little bit under, and that would be a pretty significant jump over the 4080, but what we have right now just isn't that impressive. It's a little underwhelming after such a long wait, and I know that Nvidia could have given us so much more if there's any pressure to do so, but to be fair, the AI performance should be a pretty massive increase, and without said competition, even though the 5080 isn't an exciting upgrade, there's just not gonna be anything else competing with it, and it's bringing prices lower instead of higher, which is much better than what I can say for the 5090. For that reason, if you can get the 5080 for 999 and only at that price, if you have something slower than a 4080, yeah, I would recommend buying it. But if it's more than 999, then I would simply skip it and probably grab a deal on a used card or wait to see what the 6090 has to offer. Because if you're sitting there with a 4080 or something faster, then the 5080 is just not gonna be a very impressive upgrade. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that the RTX 5080 is a good card, a mediocre card, or even a bad card? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video.